Here's the plan. We are going to start at the top of the survey and work our way down. If you haven't filled it out and you want to, the link is still active. Take it now and then you can see how your responses compare to the results. The first thing that I ask in the survey is which game is better. When playing any game, it's natural for us to compare it to games of our past. In one way or another, we formulate our opinion. So before getting into anything specific, I wanted to know your preference. I believe our opinions are very important, especially when we consider what's fun and what's not. Whether our opinions are formed from accurate perceptions or otherwise, we use them on a daily basis to make plenty of decisions. But when it comes to discussing video games with others, there are only two places for our opinions. One is the beginning of a conversation, and the other is at the end. My reasoning? An opinion is a great place to start by expressing where you stand on an issue. From that point, the, to communicate on the same page or on the same level, it's important to be able to talk about a game objectively. It's only with a clear language that we can carefully examine the complicated inner workings of game design to help understand and explain how we were influenced to form our opinions in the first place. To end a conversation in a GG, we have to figure out not that we have different opinions and ideas, but why. Ask just about any tournament level fighting game competitor what's important in a fighting game, and they'll probably answer something along the lines of a high skill ceiling, depth, complexity, and balance. While all of these qualities are important, I don't think any of these gamers pick the games that they love by such a criteria. My theory is, whatever games your friends are playing, whatever game already has a competitive community, or whatever game looks cool, are the things that start us on our way to fandom. From there, we either trust the game series, the developers, or we just stick with the same game that we've been playing for years. The takeaway is we all think these qualities are important, yet we don't have a good way of measuring them, let alone any idea of what our limits are. I'm willing to bet that we don't have any hard limits, which is kind of funny when you think about how adamantly some of us will argue for these points. I think it's safe to say that skill, depth, complexity, and balance are a large part of what contributes to our enjoyment of competitive gaming. Examining these elements more closely will bring us key insight to our thoughts and opinions. So let's take a closer look at question number three from the survey. Question number three states, which game takes more skill to play on a tournament level? Seems like a simple enough question. Many gamers talk about skill all the time, yet the responses from the survey are all over the place. For one, many saw fit to declare or define their own personal definition of what skill is. This is a great move because it helps put us on the same page. This way, the communication won't get hung up on the dictionary level, meaning a discrepancy in definitions. Some felt that the very idea of comparing the skill of one game to another is ridiculous and or impossible. I completely disagree. Not only is it reasonable to compare the skill required to play Brawl versus Melee on a tournament level, but it's not out of the question to compare the skill between Smash and Street Fighter. For that matter, it's not impossible to compare the skill it takes to play Smash versus a violent solo. Trust me. We'll get there, but first we need to break down skill into smaller, universal parts. Notice how the following responses from the survey give us some important categories to consider. I've bolded the keywords. See what I mean about gamers having good instincts? As a whole, the Smash community has a really good understanding of what skill is, but no one person gave a response with the full picture, so allow me. 
One important thing to keep in mind when considering how much skill it takes to perform an action is how your own experiences and skills shapes your perception. In some ways, when you're good at something, you tend to view similar lower level tasks as being really easy. When you have a lack of some type of skill, it's possible to view even a simple task as being extremely difficult. So what we need is a system that breaks down skill into categories that can be measured objectively. So I've created the Descartes system. As a pun on Rene Descartes, cognito ergo sum, I think therefore I am, the Descartes system is rooted in the fundamental concept of video gaming. Being a uniquely interactive medium, players have the power to influence the game state slash presentation slash art form. This act of influencing is our agency. To act, we must use some facet or combination of our skills. Therefore, we can express the idea of selfhood or agency in a virtual environment as I Descartes, therefore I am. Descartes is an acronym for the five core types of skill, dexterity, knowledge, adaptation, reflex, and timing. Each core type contains about six subtypes, giving us everything we need to compare a Vivaldi piece to playing pit and brawl. First up, we have dexterity, the skill of action. Speed is rapidly repeating the same input or how quickly one can execute a sequence of inputs. Control mainly applies to analog actions or inputs and it measures how accurately one can execute to varying degrees. Harmony is a measure of how the physical act of executing one input or motion affects the potential to execute another. This is mainly a measure of one's coordination and body awareness. Efficiency measures how one's technique minimizes effort and maximizes execution. Stamina is a measure of one's overall energy, and power is a measure of strength. For video games, power is a subcategory that mainly applies to motion controls. Myth 2.1. Melee requires more dexterity, technical, skill than brawl. Dexterity is what many smashers mean when they talk about technical ability. According to the survey, about 95-99% to 99 of smashers agree that melee takes more technical skill than brawl. I'm not so sure, so let's consider all the subcategories of dexterity. Sure, melee fox, falco, and falcon take a lot of speed to play at a high level, but they're the extreme examples. Outside of this group, the speed of input drops precipitously. Unfortunately, when most smashers think of melee, they probably have a matchup with Fox or Falco as one of the characters in mind. These fast characters certainly don't make up the majority of the melee experience, even though they dominate the tournament scene. In Brawl, there are plenty of characters that take a lot of speed dexterity skill to play at a high level, just like the fast melee characters. For a simple example, there are button mashing moves. Pikachu's jab, Ness's down tilt, Pitt's Angel Ring and Meta Knight's Mock Tornado are a few examples of moves that get better and more versatile with a high speed execution. Then there are characters like Sonic, who not only have a button mashing spin dash move, but a special move set that features a lot of cancels. You can cancel the spin dash into a jump, a shield, and then do some attacking or grabbing with just a push of a few buttons. In fact, a good Sonic or Diddy player can take a lot of speed dexterity just like fast melee characters. Bee reversing, glide tossing, and dacus are advanced techniques that all require quick fingers. And this isn't even considering other facets of dexterity skill like control, stamina, and harmony. Looping up to four arrows while fighting intelligently takes a lot of control as a technical pit player. Because one facet of dexterity skill isn't necessarily harder than the others, we can consider arrow looping as an example that makes pit and brawl highly technical. If you're only thinking in terms of shuffling and shine canceling to determine how technical melee is, you're missing the bigger picture. So until we look very closely at how all the characters play at a high level from each game, the only thing we can conclude at this point in regards to Myth 2.1 is that both games take a lot of dexterity skill to play at a high level.